All right, everyone, now we got to talk about San Francisco a little bit because, like, San Francisco is the seed of political correctness for the most part. Like, not completely. Like, Oakland is pretty bad, and Portland in some places. New York tries, but, like, uh, I guess they got Giulianiized over time, so a little bit less. Uh, San Francisco, though, is hilarious, and California, by and large. I feel sorry for those of you who are like, you know, you're fans of the work and you're stuck in California and some of you are like, you secretly like it maybe. It does have a nice climate at some points. It would be nice if it weren't for the PC stuff. But San, uh, yeah, and the earthquakes. Uh, but San Francisco has decided to do a little bit of newspeak, linguistic propaganda. So now um, it's no longer convicted felon if you're in San Francisco. Anywhere else in the country. If you commit a significant crime, you're a convicted felon once you've been convicted. That's sort of the point. In San Francisco, though, you're a justice-involved person. So they want to take away, I guess, the stigma of being a convicted felon. Now, in some cases, I can almost understand the point and even agree with it, like drug possession. Um, some white-collar crime or something, you know, happens a long time ago. I can understand the idea of expunging records and trying to get people rehabilitated and, and assimilated back into society. I think for a lot of things, you know, currently that we do, they shouldn't be against the law at all. Like weed never should have been illegal. Uh, <laughs> psychedelics. Uh, many things. But at the same time, if somebody is like, so this is like saying like, yeah, you're, you're first degree assault and battery plus, you know, exacerbated, you know, battery with a deadly weapon or something. No, 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 you're not a convicted felon at all. Yeah, you spent years in jail and, you know, you've got tattoos and a shiv on you at all times. Uh, we're not going to call you a convicted felon anymore. How is this going to be helpful? This is sort of like when California decriminalized giving AIDS to people. Uh, and it's like, well, you know, now you can treat it, so it's not a huge problem anymore, which is bullshit. <laughs> it is a huge problem. Uh, but we're going to decriminalize it. It's fucking nuts. It doesn't make any sense at all. And this sort of stuff keeps happening in California, specifically San Francisco uh, and outlying areas, to the point at which San Diego, which isn't like, you know, a far-right city or something, it's not like going out in the middle of Wyoming. San Diego decided to revolt against the state on the immigration issue and say, no, we'll, we'll cooperate with federal law enforcement, we'll cooperate with ICE. It was funny during the uh, ICE raid period there when people were laughing about too few people being actually caught by the ICE raids. It's like, yes, because we have sanctuary cities and towns in this country in which ICE can't freely operate and we have a network of people that style themselves after the Underground Railroad really to try to evade federal authority on something on one of the very few issues on which the federal government has explicit authority and an explicit responsibility to police things. It's like one of the few things that a, that a, a classical liberal can give to the federal government as a supreme power is the ability to guard the borders. Once a person's in the country, ideally the states can handle it. Some of them refuse to. California is a sanctuary state, not even just a, it's not, it's bigger than a city. Uh, it's half of our Pacific coastline in the lower 48, and they don't really give a fuck what happens. So all of this weird stuff happens in San Francisco and other parts of California. It's nuts. And by the way, it doesn't change anything. So in San Francisco, you're a justice-involved person. Okay, but if you say to, you know, your prospective employer, oh yeah, I'm a justice-involved person. Oh, okay, convicted felon. What'd you, what's, what were you in for? It's not going to change anything. How the hell is it helpful? All this sort of stuff does is it, it uh, actually puts a target on the back of that person because now other people who might have shown them a bit of mercy, I think will think they're getting handled with kid gloves and show them less. They'll show them less mercy as a result of this, potentially. Uh, that's a possibility. So it should be worrisome for people who are trying to get their lives back on track after nonviolent felonious crimes. You know, something, again, white collar, larceny. Uh, they stole a car when they were 15. Something like that. Um, you know, it's a problem. It's crazy talk. San Francisco is a, a den of goofies. It's like, uh, what was it my grandfather used to say? He said, uh, California is the land of fruits and nuts. It's like, I guess, the idea you are what you eat, and, and they've got, like, lots of almonds and strawberries and shit. It's funny, but, I mean, come on. Uh, this isn't actually helpful, and it required the city council had to sit down and debate over what they were going to term, I guess, convicted felons. Maybe part of it is because there are so many in urban California, because you've, got, yeah, you've actually got a very draconian justice system, too. The LAPD... 
world renowned for being brutal. Remember the Christopher Dorner case? Like years and I think this was like fucking five years ago or something now. Remember Dorner was on the loose and they just flipped out and they started shooting up. There were several occasions on which they opened fire on vehicles unrelated to the Dorner case. They injured uh, several people. They're lucky that they didn't kill anybody. All of a sudden, people start firing at your vehicle. You're in urban California. What's your first inclination? Hit the gas because there's a gang war breaking out. You're taking fire. Get out of the area. But it was the LAPD, and I think they settled out in, in both of those cases. And in one of them, I think they never ended up paying a penny. They, oh, yeah, it's proper procedure for us to open fire on a pickup truck because it looks topically similar to the one Dorner might be driving. We're not even sure, but we're going to shoot at it anyway. And then, of course, they had their standoff there and burned the cabin to the ground on top of him. And then they, when they were surrounding him there, people were listening to the scanners and shit. There were a lot of people that were saying, can't corner the Dorner, and they kind of admired him simply because of his opponent being the LAPD. They had a problem with them, I think, more than Dorner. It was a little like, um, have you seen that movie, The Park is Mine, about the disgruntled Vietnam vet who wants to sort of set off fireworks in Central Park and explosives and shit and remind people about those who served? And goes a little crazy. I won't give away too much of the plot. It's actually a good movie. It was made for TV. It's not even really a movie. It was a made for TV sort of multi-part special. Fucking watch it. Uh, excellent movie. Acting's a little bit off. But uh, it's standard, you know, standard 80s sort of Rambo era material. So I think that most people would like it. Justice involved person. Yeah. Oh yeah, I sold heroin to 10 year olds. I'm a justice involved person. Yeah, I, I killed my ex, uh, a justice-involved person. No, I'm not a convicted felon, I'm a justice-involved person. Sounds like, it sounds innocuous, sounds like uh, you didn't commit any crime, but you did. And the real crime is that San Francisco City Council is allowed to continue holding court. That's about all. Peace out.